He work, work, works, and shuts up. Uh, that, that, the last <laughs> part was classic Randy Feekner. And, you know, that's the way, if you're a rookie, I think that's a real good way to approach it. That's the way David DeCastro approached it. That's the way T.J. Watt approached it. Uh, come in, establish yourself, let your let your shoulder pads do the talking, and, and then, you know, grow into the rest of it as, as you progress. But what a start for Chase Claypool. Absolutely. Alex Highsmith, also a member of that draft class that we have heard high praises from as well. Uh, we know that Bud Dupree was injured a little bit last week. He is back as well. And also, you know, T.J. Watt, as you said, somebody who's growing into his own personality. I think when he was drafted, of course, a first-round draft pick has a ton of pressure on them to begin with, but he did not want to be known as J.J. or Derek's little brother. So I think that was something that uh, once T.J. put some stats behind there, showed the work on the field, like you mentioned, of Claypool, he stayed quiet. I don't think he was as quiet as Dave DeCastro. Pretty close. Not that close. Uh, I, I beg to differ. He was, I might have to go back and count the words from some of their interviews their rookie season. I would describe it as guarded, reserved, uh, didn't want to make any headlines with what he said, didn't want to well, that, stir the pot, uh, you know, cooperative. Yeah, we're going to work hard. We're going to try to win, just kind of get through it and, and move on. Uh, now you hear T.J. Watt uh, as a, a voice for the team, uh, a self-described guy who brings energy and emotion to practice and and pays attention to those kind of things uh just a, a steady progression for tj watt it's, he's got a lot to say you know those, those watt boys are fun right i mean jj kind of set the tone with that right the, all the commercials and things that that he's done and uh tj watt uh, catching up to J.J. in more ways than one, Missy. Well, I'm going back to last year when we were allowed in the locker room to see what the players were doing. The Beano board was something T.J. Watt brought in, and that got very competitive at all times. Uh, kind of set up on the Steelers' pool table back at the Southside facility. But this year, Cam Hayward's agent sent in that spike ball, and T.J. was very vocal about it the other day. He was partners with Tyson Aluwalu, and it just sounds like that defensive bunch competitive all the time and we heard from Ben Roethlisberger today when he was asked who's winning those 11 on 11 drills and he just simply said defense another thing you don't hear every year and I, I definitely wanted to uh, ask Ben Roethlisberger about that as you get a good look at the dynamic duo at outside linebacker TJ Watt and uh, Bud Dupree uh, we have heard uh, Minka Fitzpatrick uh, I asked him about you know give and take in practice as Mike Tomlin has referenced and his response was, what practices are you watching? <laughs> the only time the offense makes a play is when the defense screws up. They're good enough to notice when we screw up. Other than that, we win the 50-50 balls. We win the pass rush. We're this, we're that. Asked T.J. Watt about it the other day. He said, we're making life miserable for those guys on offense. And asked Ben about it today, who's winning? He said defense. He admitted it. Missy, I've never heard this. All the years I've covered Steeler camp, who won backs on backers? Linebacker, oh, the defense, we, we dominated. Ask a running back, oh, we killed them. <laughs> Who's winning red zone? Same thing. Who's winning uh, whatever, uh, run game, any kind of 11-on-11, 11 11, any kind of specialty period, third down. Uh, it is partisan politics to uh, a man. Everybody always says their side's winning. And today, Ben Roethlisberger, in one word, said defense. They, they must be playing pretty well. All right, the Steelers are moving into the walkthrough portion, so we cannot take you down live on the field. But just to recap, some of the people not participating today in practice, the good news is a number of Steelers who have missed time this week are back on the practice field. But today, Ryan Switzer is not practicing. Kareth White is not practicing. And it appears also Cam Kennedy, who's dealing with a knee injury, and also newcomer Chris Wormley not practicing today for the Steelers. We will take you back down on the field in just a little bit. But I did hear that our good friend Craig Wolfley is standing by he is socially distanced from us and ready to go a lot of talk today wolf about ben roethlisberger and i don't think you can get tired of talking about him and just the shape he came into for this training camp following a very excruciating rehab plan following that surgery and missing so much of 2019 what is the biggest thing you're seeing from number seven this camp you know what i see and what i'm feeling as much as i can from a distance right now is his hunger I mean, this is guy. This guy is very hungry. You talk about Lombardis with an S, with plurals and all that sort of thing. Um, this is a young man who I see him coming back and really wanting to have at it and recapture and even go beyond what he's already done. Now you think about all he's done and all he's become. Uh, that's quite a list of stuff of, of good stuff that he's done. 
but he's capable of doing even more. And one of, one of the things I think about when I see him is his leadership qualities. He's reaching out to encourage others more so than I've ever seen him. And that's exactly what this offense needs. They need that shot in the arm from their Hall of Famer. They need that guy to come out and say, hey, let's go, boys. I remember at Super Bowl 43 after the, the uh, Cardinals had taken the lead. And I remember when he got the guys together right before that kickoff and says, we are made to do this. We can do this. And then he leads them on down to the winning touchdown. That's the guy they need back in the saddle again. All right. Well, if we are going to play a quick soundbite from Ben Roethlisberger via Zoom earlier today talking about his new practice schedule here at Steelers camp. Yeah, it's felt really good. Um, you know, we've always, for the last you know handful of years, we've kind of done the, uh, done the same routine with a full day, half day, off day. Um, and I even went three days in a row last week. And, um, you know, it's been feeling really good. I, I definitely need to, to give it some time um, to, to rest that kind of one day off every so often, uh, just out of general fatigueness and soreness. Um, but it, it's amazing how fast it bounces back and feels great the next day. So I uh, feel very confident going into a regular season schedule where we get, you know, Tuesdays off and Friday's a half day, Saturday's a, a travel type day. So those kind of um, scheduled days off uh, throughout the regular season I think are going to be perfect. Well, some other highlights from that Ben Zoom today that follow up on what he just said regarding, uh, you know, the, the the adjusted schedule based on how well he's able to throw the ball and, and show up every day. He talked about, oh, I thought I underthrew a ball recently, but I was wrong. I did. It was right on the money. <laughs> and then uh, he mentioned not long thereafter regarding his arm strength, maybe even a little bit better than it was before. Now, when a guy like Ben Roethlisberger says, yeah, maybe my arm might be stronger, is what he's really saying, I got a cannon, baby. <laughs> I like it, Mike. You are you know, in my mind, you're speaking the truth right there. Look, you think about Ben. Ben has said, well, I've had some arm discomfort anyhow for 13, 14 years. And then, you know, they flash to a, a game when he dove in the end zone. I don't know. But, you know, he talks about having a small tear. Well, then, you know what, how many years ago was it that he started to go with the full day, half a day, day off, that sort of rotation? Well, you know what, when you get it all fixed up and all them flexors are feeling fine and doing good and you are the $6 million man all over again, then you know what, you don't need the, full, the half a day, the, you know, the day off is regular. He's pressing a little bit, and I love it because he's trying to see where he's at because he wants to know that arm inside and out. Where does that start to get sore if it ever gets sore? you got to know that. Now, with all that, you've got to pull back and make sure that you're allowing the healing and resting processes to be able to compensate for putting the pressure on. But with the, the lack of preseason and all those things that they used to do you know, when, when in the preseason games, you know, the warming up and everything with that arm, I think those reps taken away and the OTAs, uh, I, I think that Ben just feels it's lively, it's strong. I don't need all those days off. And by golly, you know what? The guy is back. He's got a cannon. I think you're right, Mike. Wolf, what about Ben Roethlisberger today also saying how maybe sometimes the pass isn't exactly where he tells the receiver it's going to go to test them? Uh, what is a training camp like with Ben Roethlisberger from your experience of watching him so much in terms of getting these guys ready to play, knowing there are no preseason games? And, hey, by the way, week one's about two weeks away. Exactly so, and he's going to be pushing these guys. You know, you hear guys like Eric Ebron and the rest of the guys say, I'm trying to find out what he's looking at. I want to see what he's thinking. I want to know how he's thinking. Well, the reason reason is I want to be where he wants me to be when I'm supposed to be there. And that's what the this whole preseason or yeah, preseason process is about without the preseason games. It's making sure that you're on the same page and you're getting it done. You know, I can see Ben throwing a little wide here, a little wide there. Why? Because I remember back in the day, way back in the day, Johnny Unitas thrown to the great Raymond Barry years ago. He didn't like Raymond Barry and he chucked it all over the place trying to make the guy look bad. <laughs> Raymond Barry kept catching him. <laughs> Then went on, you know, and you got the Hall of Famer. So the fact is, with Ben, I can see him. I want to test out this kid, Claypool. I want to see if, you know, if I throw it a little off the mark, he moves to where I, I think he should be. You know, that's just the process of being the lead quarterback, knowing who your guys are, knowing what they're capable of, and making sure they're listening to you and getting to the places you want to be. There's an oft-told story about Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski. Gronkowski's taking the inside release over and over, and Brady kept telling him, all right, you keep doing that, I ain't going to throw it to you. All right, you, you keep taking that inside release, I'm not going to throw it to you. Finally, Gronk says, when I took the outside release, he threw me the ball. 
Same thing's applying here. Another Hall of Fame quarterback, Ben, he's going to make sure those guys get where he wants them, he wants them to be. I love that uh, Brady Gronkowski reference. Uh, for those of you who are not uh, of the same age as uh, Craig Wolfley and myself, <laughs> Johnny Unitas and Raymond Berry played for a team called the Baltimore Colts right. in the 1950s and the 1960s. Google it. They were really good. Yeah, there used to be. The Colts used to be in Baltimore, believe it or not. But, Wolf, uh, Ben Rock- By the way, Mike, I played in Baltimore against the Colts. Memorial Stadium. Yes. Yes, my rookie year, 1980. Ben Roethlisberger also made what I found uh, just to be a really interesting comment today when he talked about one of the things he's got to get past is nerves. Talked about uh, having uh, jelly kind of legs. Right. And uh, when he gets back in that first I mean, this guy's played forever, Wolf. He's done everything. He's not going to be nervous, is he? (laughs) You know, there's a saying, sea legs, right, or a term, sea legs. you got to get your sea legs. Look, it doesn't matter how long you've done this, and it, you know, it will eventually feel like you're ride. You, you know, just like riding a bicycle, you get right back on and do it. But it takes a little bit of rampage, a little bit of time to ramp up to that and get her done. When I, I remember back when I tore the ACL in my knee, I missed seven weeks. I still played 11 games that year, but the the scariest hit I took all year long. All right, all year long, the scariest hit was the very first hit at practice at Three Rivers. And I remember John Cole, when I asked him, I said, how did the practice film look? He said, you looked like a cat on a hot tin roof because you were picking your leg up all the time. Every time somebody would brush or bump up against me, you did that. So what do you do? Well, maybe you say to Cam Hayward, maybe you say to Stefan Tuitt, maybe you say to Bud Dupree or T.J. Watt, you know what, give me a little bit of bang. You know, you come by, just kind of, you know, a you know, little something to start to, you know, take that anxiety about getting hit away from me. And you know what, he'll... It, it, it'll be just like getting on a bicycle and riding all over again. Well, well, from everything we've seen from Ben Roethlisberger here at Heinz Field during training camp, we still have to finish out this week and then they have next week. But I think it's safe to say he's checking the training camp box. He is ready for the regular season, but he did say that would be the next hurdle in his journey. And not only that, yes, that beard is trying not to be too nervous. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I've noticed, it's funny because I've talked to Coach uh, Randy and Coach Tom a little bit when we've done – um, some two-minute drills against the defense. I've actually felt like like the jelly kind of legs. Like I felt nervous out on the practice field, which I've never felt before, uh, maybe not for a long time. But um, so I know if I'm if I'm nervous out there on the practice field right now, that that the game's gonna it's gonna be a different feeling. And so um, that I think is gonna be the last hurdle in getting hit. You know, I've I'm trying to talk TJ and some of those guys to just give me little bumps every once in a while, but no one will do it. But uh, getting hit and, and, and calming the nerves are going to be big ones for me. All right. Sorry about that, Wolf. I should have let you know where we were going there. Missy, but... it's training camp. I missed <laughs> I the know. cue. You know, <laughs> miscommunication. This it, is how it happens. I'll go run have, my laps. It's not hard this being kind of so far apart. And, and win. We got to do better. We got to get. We got to get these out of the way here in training camp. All right. Well, before we let Wolf go, I do want him to settle something for us here. Uh, earlier in the program, I don't know if you heard we. Pursuit and I were debating who was more quiet and said less words their rookie season, T.J. Watt or Dave DeCastro. Who are you picking? I would have to go, and I'll say this, with a Dave DeCastro. Thank and you. The reason, oh, Thank that, you. <laughs> it, it's DeCastro. But you said it wasn't even close. I said it was very similar. Mike, oh. understand you never argue with a woman, okay? Here's the second. <laughs> That's thing. all I do, Wolf. Come on. <laughs> the, second, the, the great, second greatest line I heard from him was when we tried to get him on the show with Tunch and I up at training camp, and he said, could we just wait until I do something? <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow, okay, I get you. Well, let's start one more argument. Uh, <laughs> ben Roethlisberger <laughs> talked about James Washington today, and he said his conditioning is like no one I've ever seen before. Wow. Now, I understand James Washington is a highly conditioned athlete, but no one I've ever seen before – for me, I think of a number 84 when that phrase gets thrown around. Is James Washington look that good to you? He's looking really good to make that sort of comparison. Um, I think that's a great shot in the arm for the Washington. You know, think about it. You're, you come back, you got this Hall of Fame quarterback. You've had a couple of years. One of them was disrupted with the injury. But a guy comes in and says just what he says right there. It's the best condition, looking greater than anybody. Uh, I'm James, Wa- James Washington. I'm thinking I really appreciate that. That's a shot in the arm from the training I've done in the offseason. And now I th- I'm going to use that as a springboard to move ahead. That's a nice move by, uh, by, a good, by a solid leader. 
All right. Well, thanks as always for joining us. We always appreciate uh, you settling arguments, especially when they're in my favor and for offering your insights. So thanks so much. We're going to have your good friend, Tunch Ilkin, joining us just a little bit later in the show. So Wolf, you are good to go. No more miscommunication. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right, Mike, I did want to mentor, mention some roster moves the Steelers made today. They signed long snapper Liam McCall and a familiar face and linebacker J. Roan Elliott. Uh, that is somebody who was with the Steelers, J. Roan Elliott, last preseason. And thanks to our handy spotter, Alec, the long snapper is number 46 and Elliott is wearing number 45. He was 51 last year, so not to confuse everybody, Elliott is now wearing 45 today. They are both out there at practice and to make room on the 80-man roster, they released linebacker Leo Lewis and waived injured wide receiver Anthony Johnson, who was someone who got hurt in practice earlier this week. So uh, it was an off day yesterday, as I had said, Mike, but we did have a chance to hear from Steelers general manager Kevin Colbert. So let's take a listen as he got a ton of questions, uh, could not answer directly about Cam Hayward and where those contract situations are, but trying to project and figure out what that salary cap number is going to be for next season. Yeah, we haven't talked about amending our, um, you know, our policy. And again, that's an organizational policy um, that's been in, in place for a lot of years. So I don't anticipate that changing. Um, we'll continue to, to look at situations. And if one makes sense, we'll do it. As you guys know, we never talk about individual um, negotiations and you know we have to leave it at that but I don't anticipate us changing that under the current conditions again we never would we never have or never will talk about an individual negotiation um, as I said earlier we're always looking at where we are where we want to be and not only in 2020 but we also have to keep in mind uh, what the future holds for us in 21 2021 and beyond and quite honestly that's a that's a big unknown. Um, we don't know what we're dealing with in future caps. So we just have to be aware of that. But we also have to be aware of where we are in 2020. And if something makes sense, um, then we'd consider it. But at this point, again, as, as always, that stuff stays in-house on an individual matter. You know, Missy, one of the other uh, subjects that Kevin Colbert touched on was the changes in practice squads and practice squad protocol this season. Uh, the practice squads are bigger. It's easier to move players uh, up and down from the active roster to the practice squad. And as a result, and because of the pandemic circumstances, uh, you know, never can really be sure what's uh, uh, coming around the corner, as we found out last weekend. Uh, 11 NFL teams did anyway. Uh, some of the guys that the Steelers are signing are NFL guys, known varsity athletes, maybe not uh, famous uh, for being known varsity athletes, but J. Ron Elliott, a great example. Uh, 44 career NFL games, including five with the Steelers last season. He's played with the Packers. He's played with Dallas. Kevin Colbert cited the safety, Curtis Riley, and running back Wendell Smallwood. Both of those guys have played in the league. Not that they were destined for the practice squad, but these are the types of guys you want to have on your practice squad because uh, rather than use it for developmental purposes, and hey, in a perfect world, in most years, everybody stays healthy. The practice squad guys get to grow their games and, uh, and you know, bloom. Uh, you don't have to put them in before they're ready. But this year you might need guys uh, at the drop of a hat. So uh, I think they're going to have some guys on that practice squad with a lot more NFL experience than you usually see. All right, we heard the horn, Pursuta. That means the Steelers are moving into the individual portion of practice now here at Heinz Field, which means we can go back down to the field and show you some exclusive live look-ins. And that also means it's time to bring in Tunch Ilkin, who has our player spotlight. And Tunch, today we pick Steve Nelson. So take it away. Tell us what we need to know about number 22. You know what, Missy? Steve Nelson is a very heady player. He's a student of the game. He very rarely gets caught out of position. He high points the ball well. He's got great hands. He changes direction well, and he's fast. And uh, he's a film rat. And last year, I don't think he gave up a touchdown pass. Uh, he's a very good guy, too, and he's a very good communicator. He talks to the guys, and, uh, you know, I'm a big fan. Tunch, uh, one of the things we've heard from Steve Nelson this year is that he thinks he's underrated. And, yeah. Uh, he's using that as a little chip on the shoulder. And uh, Mike Tomlin said, hey, uh, you know, I'm going to paraphrase Mike Tomlin. Whatever these guys need to get an edge, I'm all for it. So yeah. if he, he thinks he's underrated, great. Uh, of, of, we've seen other players in the past uh, 
use that to, to their advantage. That can that can be of real value, can't it? Yeah, he's like Mike Conrad. He's got a battery on his shoulder. <laughs> and, and, you know, I think it's a boulder. And he says he's underrated. And I think he's underrated, too, because, I, you know, I think he's a great player. He sees the field well. And, uh, uh, you know, he plays on the ball. He jumps routes. And, I, you know, I think that uh, – when you're underrated, when you think you're underrated, you have something to prove. You know, I was that way, uh, Mikey, and I, I was that way. So, you know, you every day you come out there and you work hard and you, and you, you don't uh, back down. Tunch, what else are you seeing from the secondary during this camp? Of course, the defense is returning almost all of their starters. You're seeing guys like Devin Bush hopefully taking that year two jump. But in terms of the secondary specifically, we mentioned Joe Hayden. What are you seeing from them, and how do you think the mystery question everybody wants to know, how will Minka Fitzpatrick possibly be used differently, or will it be the same? You know, every interview I, I've seen, well, Tom Bradley uh, when on a Zoom call, he said, we're gonna. We're not gonna move him around. We're gonna play him at free safety. And uh, uh, Minka Fitzpatrick plays great at free safety. Uh, he's a, a born center fielder. He plays the ball well. He plays with his eyes. You know, and as free safety, uh, Missy, you've got to play with your eyes. And I, I think he does a great job of that. And Cam Sutton, uh, you know, when uh, Mike Tomlin was asked about Cam Sutton, he said versatility. He could play outside, he could play inside, he could play free safety, and uh, he is very, very athletic. He can tackle well, he high points the ball well, he changes the direction, and uh, he can play center field too. And, you know, when Terrell Austin was interviewed, he said, we're going to move uh, uh, Minka around a little bit, and so I'm not sure what they're going <laughs> to do with Minka. You know, uh, and, but, and I, I think they're trying to play it close to the vest so they didn't, the, they don't give Joe Judge uh, any uh, uh, any uh, thing to uh, play on. So uh, I, you know, I, I just love the, I love Joe Hayden, uh, Mike, Mike Hilton. Uh, he plays well. He plays coverage well. He blitzes well. He plays the run well. You know, one of the things uh, of Mike Hilton. When a pulling guard comes out to him, he submarines the guard, and he plays under him, and he makes the tackle. He piles up uh, the hole, and so, uh, you know, I'm a big fan, and uh, Mike Hilton's a uh, terrific player. All right, Tunch, I think we have some fan questions that were submitted thanks to Steelers Nation Unite to see some of your thoughts on the secondary. So I'm going to read one of them to you. I don't believe you can see this. This is from Heather. She says, I believe the secondary had 12 interceptions last season. Do you see that number increasing this year with Minka and Nelson having another year in the Steelers system? Yeah, Missy, I, I see that number increasing because – they are hungry. The secondary is hungry, and they, they're going to play well. And, you know, one of the things that uh, uh, we're going to do is because Ben is back and the offense is back, James Conner is back, the, the offense is going to take the lead, and when the offense takes the lead, uh, the defense uh, rushes the pass there, and uh, Keith Butler uh, we'll turn the dogs loose, and then the, when the ball's in the air, the secondary has a, a play on it, and so I, I think that that uh, the takeaways are going to increase, the interceptions are going to increase. Tunch, I'm with you. If the offense does its part, and it sounds kind of strange to think that maybe the key to more takeaways and sacks is the offense, but they played with a lead infrequently last year. They almost never right. played with a big lead. And uh, if you just think back to that game in Arizona when the Steelers actually had a lead at the end and they knew the Cardinals had to pass and uh, just, uh, you know, the castle was stormed and uh, it was jailbreak pass rush and an assault on Kyler Murray. If they could spend more time in the lead, they're going to have ample opportunity to either knock quarterbacks down or force them into mistakes. You know, Mikey, I love that pass rush. I love Stephon Tewitt. I love T.J. Watt. I love... Uh, Bud Dupree, and I love Cam Hayward. And, uh, you know, the the thing about the two, Cam and Stefan, they're both dominant players. And so they push the pocket, and TJ gets up the field, and Bud uh, Dupree gets up the field, and 
when Stefan and uh, Cam push the pocket, they're going to get, you know, TJ's going to get sacks uh, and Buddy's going to get sacks and Cam Hayward's going to get sacks. One of the uh, best moves that I've seen, Cam, is shake and bull. Uh, and uh, he's taken Quinn Nelson into uh, the lap of the quarterback last year. And I, I think that there's going to be more sacks and more takeaways. All right, let's get to another fan question here. Tunch, this one is coming from Thor. How likely is it that the defense replicates its success and output from last season, given how the offense will be more dependable with Big Ben back? I know you kind of touched on that, but anything yeah. else you want to add? Yeah, no, no, I, I just, uh, Missy, I, I think they're going to be a, a takeaway machine. And, uh, you know, I have unbelievable confidence in Ben. I have unbelievable confidence in that offensive line. I have unbelievable confidence in Chase Claypool uh, and James Conner. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're, they're, when they jump out to a lead, if they come out of the gates fast, uh, the defense will take the ball away and they will get sacks. All right, let's go to one more fan question, Tunch. Oh. Just kidding. We are done with our fan questions, but we are taking a live look at the Steelers' defense. Of course, you see number 97 there. I don't know if you heard Kevin Colbert yesterday talking about, you know, they don't talk about the individual contracts. Of course, we know how the Steelers' organization operates. There are no negotiations, no new contracts once that week one game is played. So what does your gut tell you in terms of what will happen possibly with Cam Hayward before now in that Monday night game? You know, I, I don't think uh, uh, they're going to negotiate his contract during the season I think that uh, uh, postseason they're gonna give him a deal and uh, you know cam you've got to pay cam uh, he is probably the most dominant player on your defense and he plays the run well he plays the pass well and uh, you know he is a, a, a born leader and I'm a big fan of his and uh, you know what uh, I I I believe Kevin Colbert and, uh, is going to uh, set him up for a big contract in the offseason. Yeah, you know what? And one of the things Kevin Colbert stressed yesterday, Tunch, was that amid all this uncertainty, they're trying to react based on what they know. And what they know right now is the salary cap might be $175 million next year. And I don't think that would be good for the Steelers. I don't think that would be good for half the league. I don't think that would be good for the players. I don't think that would be good for the NFL. But they've got to figure out a way to maybe get that number uh, jacked up closer to what it might have been uh, without all these uh, un unusual circumstances that everybody is dealing with. Uh, initially, I thought they would find a way to get the Cam Hayward thing done before the season, but I really got the impression listening to Kevin Colbert yesterday that that kind of stuff is going to stay on hold until they can proceed with a little more financial certainty. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, I, I don't believe Cam is insulted by it because all the players know what's happening with the uh, pandemic. Uh, you know, they, they know what's happening because, uh, you know, the ticket prices, is, the, the, t the ticket uh, buys are not going to be uh, what they were, but the television contract is going to be what, they, uh, what it is. And so I, I just think that... Uh, 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 every contract is going to be done in the off season because, you know, one of the things, uh, Mikey, that you can't place on a player is contract negotiation during the season because you want him to focus totally on the opponent. You want him to focus totally on practice. You want to f uh, you want him to focus totally on the games. Tunch, going back to the Steelers secondary, Ryan just tweeted me, so I'm not sure if we could pull this tweet in or not, but he was wondering what do you think the effect was with ter ter uh, Terrell Austin excuse me, joining the Steelers defensive staff last year. We talk a lot about Minka coming, you know, signing Steve Nelson, but what did Terrell Austin do to this team? Oh, you know, Terrell Austin is a great guy and a great coach and a great communicator, and, uh, you know, he's constantly – coaching up the players kind of like Mike Tomlin Mike Tomlin is constantly coaching up the players he says uh, uh, you know communication 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 and then Terrell Austin is the same way and so he coaches up the players and you know he was a defensive coordinator uh, you know he's a he's a great coach and a great guy and the uh, the, the secondary loves him 
All right, Tunch, you need to also weigh in. Uh, the big question today here on Training Camp Live, who said less words during the rookie season? Take the Dave w. DeCastro or TJ Watt? Stop spiking Dave, the Dave, ball. David DeCastro, <laughs> I don't know if Wolf told you this, but we asked him to be on our radio show, and he said, uh, "Well, ask me when I've done something. Ask me when I've done something. And, uh, you know, he is uh, – uh, he was very, very, very quiet. Uh, T.J. Watt is quiet too, but not as quiet as David DeCastro. All right, I feel I feel a little bit better about myself. Sure, you sure? <laughs> you should, yeah. If you miss it, you so, should feel better about yourself. Thank you, Todd. Yeah. Is there somebody else down on the field we can ask? <laughs> hey, if that? someone down there has a mic and they can hear me, I'm going to ask them. So, yeah. Todd, thank you so much for your time today. We appreciate it. As always, you and Wolf always helping add to the fun here with Pursuit and I. Uh, uh, Mike, you're wrong. You're wrong. Ah, <laughs> uh, he watches Agree to Disagree. I like it, Todd. <laughs> All right, the Steelers are still in the individual portion, so let's recap for those who just joined us of some of the players who are back out at practice after missing earlier this week and the players not practicing. So number seven is out there as is Marquise Pouncey who returned to the team on Tuesday. Ryan Switzer is not practicing today. Neither is Kareth White. Both were injured on Tuesday when the team was at the UPMC Rooney Sports Complex. Alexander Myers who was dealing with a groin is back out there today. Guys who did not practice on Tuesday but are out here today. Pursuta, you want to go through the list or you want me to do it? The guys who are back? Yeah. Uh, well, you got your uh, Kevin Dotson, offensive lineman, knee, Vance McDonald, tight end, Veterans Day off, Chuck Wuma, a core four, groin, Juju, Smister, Juju Smith-Schuster, we really don't know, but he's wearing a sleeve on his leg. He's back, Terrell Edmonds. Terrell Edmonds. Terrell Edmonds. I'm screwing us all up today. Terrell Austin. My mic's driving me crazy. Terrell Austin, Sorry. Terrell Edmonds, uh, they're both back out there. <laughs> uh, Jerron Jones, uh, offensive tackle, is back. And uh, a couple of newcomers uh, that we talked about uh, recently signed, uh, J. Ron Elliott and Liam McCullough. McCullough, of course, you Big Ten fans will know, was the long snapper for the Ohio State University. Spent some time with the Raiders this year, and now he is with the Steelers. So I guess uh, Mike Tomlin said last week that backup long snapper still isn't identified I guess it still still isn't identified. Got to do something about it, right? Yeah. Bring somebody in. As we said, it is weird to say, but you know the Steelers still have whatever little bit of this week is left here at Heinz Field and next week, and then you go into regular season mode and you are preparing for a game with no preseason games. It's been a little weird, but there you see Ryan Switzer, who he uh, said got hurt on Tuesday, is not practicing today, but good to see Deontay Johnson back out there. He was missing a few times. We were able to see him run a little bit. Um, you know, James Washington was dealing with an injury so it feels like that wide receiver room has been dealing with a little bit of injuries here and there but such an important time for them to get back on the same page with Ben if they had a chance to work with him a lot or somebody like Deontay Johnson you really didn't have very much time it's uh it's working out well at that position um Deontay Johnson though you'd, you'd prefer that he get as many reps as possible because he's still just in his second year, but a guy they expect to build on the great success he had a year ago. Can we get a shot of James Conner before we get out of here? Is that uh, we can ask? Is that possible? Because I want to get uh, touch on something that Randy Feekner said okay. before we shut the show down today. Randy Feekner and Ben Roethlisberger did zooms today, and uh, this is what Randy Feekner had to say about James Conner. And I quote: "When James is healthy, he's as good as any back we've ever had here." And now I assume he means in, in Randy Feekner's Steelers tenure. But, uh, you know, in case people are still wondering, boy, should they have taken a running back instead of Claypool? And wasn't that more of a position of need? And do they really like Connor as much as they said they did in the off As good as any running back we've ever had here. Strong endorsement. You can't, uh, you can't praise a guy any more than that. We'll see if uh, James Connor makes it happen this year on a regular basis. All right, the Steelers are entering into the competition period of practice now, and it is time for our Throwback Thursday. And Steelers Nation Unites Twitter account asked for fans to submit. I didn't even know it was Thursday until you said that. I, well, I had it written down. That's the only reason why I actually remembered. But remember this place, Mike? I remember Good old St. Vincent College. Is that the Rocky home Blyer? Yes, uh, it was. I remember him. I don't think there was any shortage of uh, photos that fans could submit of the memories. Uh, you know, it is a big deal when we release the Steelers training camp schedule and just so many great memories of the autographs, the pictures, Steely even, uh, former players, current players. But uh, certainly Steelers fans look 
forward to. And as Art Rooney II said when the Steelers made the announcement that they, they were coming to Hinesville for training camp this year, they will be back at St. Vincent in 2021. There is nothing like St. Vincent College in July and August. Nothing like it. I think it's just as hot under this tent today. So, it's, but uh, <laughs> It's incredibly hot. Not that anybody cares about our problems. But, uh, yeah. man, I miss St. Vincent, and I can't wait to get back there. I really can't. All right. Well, the good news is the sun is out here at Heinz Field. Hopefully the rain is past us and the Steelers can Rocky get Blair in there. Rocky went to training camp. <laughs> right. And they're still going there. <laughs> How great is that? All right. Well, Mike needs some water. So that is going to do it for this edition of Training Camp Live presented by FedEx. Thanks so much for joining us. He wouldn't shut up about it his rookie year. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Don't forget Coach Tomlin's press conference live after practice. And we will be back as well for your wrap-up show. Thanks for joining us.